at less than $500, you can get a Google Pixel device that comes with an 855 Snapdragon chip, which means plenty of power in terms of the Pixel. But it's not exactly the Pixel that you think. What's up everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I wanna talk about this guy right here, this is the Google Pixel 4 XL. Now you all know I have a love affair when it comes to being the Pixel guy or most of my videos being related to the Google Pixel. But I had a chance, I was sitting here at the desk and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make a video about why I believe that the Google Pixel 4 XL is actually still a dynamic buy in 2021, even though it had a little bit of an issue when it first came out. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. First, let's talk about what came with the Google Pixel 4 XL. This came with a 6.3 inch P OLED. P OLED, huh? It's almost like the rumors of the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro talked about a P OLED. Hmm. 6.3 inch P OLED screen display that comes with a 537 PPI, which means crisp, nice images when you're looking at the screen of your Google Pixel 4 XL. The glass on the front end of that is Gorilla Glass 5 and comes with 90 hertz refresh rate for that ultra smooth experience as you see on the Pixel 4 XL on screen right now. Now, one thing I'll notice on screen, this is Android 12 beta number two, which means yes, this is gonna get software updates until at least October 2022, which is Android 11, 12, and 13. Don't be surprised if it goes a little bit further than that because Google's now talking about, again, allegedly with the rumor of the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro of five year support for Android OSs. Now this variant that I have right here is the 128 gig version of it. And at the time that was the biggest that you could get. So, I mean, keep that in mind. That's a little bit weaker on the side of what I would really like to see. I guess 128, I have it in my Pixel 5. So I guess it's not too bad, but yeah, I really would have loved to have seen a 256 in that when it first came out. This does not come with the headphone jack, but this does come with that active edge, which means it's the squeeze feature. So satisfying to get the Google Assistant with this a little bitty squeeze. I can't tell you how much I miss this in the Pixel 5. And oh man, Google, if you brought it back, I would not be sad about it because I thought active edge while people were like, oh, it's really gimmicky and stuff like that. I actually used it every single day and love it. It is much easier than the swipe up from the corner. Just give your phone a nice little hug and a squeeze and you can get the Google Assistant right there at your fingertips. Now I mentioned that chipset before, this is the 855 Snapdragon, which means you have more than enough power on every new Pixel since it's came out of the Pixel 4 XL, the Pixel 4a, and the Pixel 5. Those have come out with the 730 and 765G specifically, so less power in terms of the Snapdragon Qualcomm chip, but overall I have experienced no issues with both the 4a and the Pixel 5, which means this bad boy right here has more than enough power to do all the mobile gaming that you'd like, and again, still can record in 4K 30 frames a second on the rear facing camera, no heat issues or anything like that. So again, with the 855, especially when we're starting to see much more streamlined OS's experiences, I have no issues at all as it relates to the Snapdragon 855 being kind of slow or chuggy or anything like that. Now granted, this is not up there with the 888s or every, anything like that, or even the 865s from last year, but honestly, the way that Google is going to a streamlined software experience with the 4A, the 4A 5G, and the Pixel 5, you get all the good bells and whistles with that operating system made specifically for something that has less power than that of what is already in the Pixel 4 XL. So again, you're gonna get all those bells and whistles because you still have that 855 chip in it. Now, is it gonna be the best that's out on the market right now? Nope, the 888s are out there, but as you're noticing with some of these 888s and OnePlus, I'm speaking directly to you, you're throttling down certain things you don't have to necessarily do because of heat or performance issues. You don't have that so much with the Pixel 4 XL or anything like that because you don't have the 888 chip in there. So I'm actually much happier by saving roughly half the cost of those ones that have the 888 in it and getting a much better overall experience. So I'm gonna get a great software experience, but let's talk about the cameras before I talk about some of the things where you may wanna consider a different type of phone before the Pixel 4 XL. Obviously the cameras are phenomenal. You can do 4K 30 frames a second recording on the video on the back, 1080p 30 frames a second on the front, and the best portrait mode hands down bar none in any smartphone is done on a Pixel. 
and the Pixel 4 XL is no slouch when it comes to any of those things. You get the nice contrasty, cool, crisp colors that you get out of all of the photos, and they happen in an instant. You can double tap the power button or squeeze and tell the assistant to open the camera and snap a photo and it's immediately done, no worries, no chugs, no nothing like that. And of course that comes with the amazing night sight. You're gonna get all those crazy nighttime photographs for your nighttime photographer mode that's inside of you. I gotta be honest with you, the way that this thing captures photos is just breathtaking in so many ways. I can't believe that these are so good coming out of a smartphone, even on Android 12 beta. I'm still getting phenomenal videos and phenomenal photos, and I'm gonna take a video here and show you some photos that I snapped around as well, just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Now this is the rear facing 4K, 30 frames a second. I'm literally just holding the phone out in front of me. So everything that you see in here um, I don't have one of those treated rooms, so kind of the echo is the fact that I'm in a basement. But everything that you see in here is shot directly in the phone. Uh, again, 4K 30 frames a second. I can change it to 1080p 60 frames so you can see what that looks like. Now this is 1080p 60 frames a second so you can see the ultra smoothness that it is. So yeah, this is anything and everything you see in 60 frames a second, 1080p. And yeah, this is what it looks like. This is what it sounds like. Now that you've seen the cameras and all the goodies, you're gonna get good performance out of it, good software updates, great camera, a great price. Right now you can buy this thing for less than 500 bucks and depending on where you go, you can get it for less than $300 if you were to buy a fairly used nice one uh, on Swappa or anything like that. You can actually buy them from Amazon as well. You can check all the links in the description below for anything and everything related to this particular video. Now let's talk about some of the things that I didn't like and it might cause you to go, hmm, a little bit on the 4XL, the battery life on the 4XL. Not the greatest battery life. I am particularly spoiled by that of the 4A and the Pixel 4A 5G and the Pixel 5, which are just battery sippers. And that is not one I can say for the Pixel 4XL. I usually get about no more than five hours, but it does come with that 18 watt charger through USB-C, wireless charging as well. So you can plop it on a wireless charger or a Pixel stand or plug directly into your rapid charger for the 18 watts and get up to about 100% fairly quickly within about an hour or so as it relates to charging the battery. Now this does have face unlock when you're looking at the screen and I talked about how much I actually really enjoyed the display on this particular device, but there are some that have complained that the device's screen is kind of boo-boo and less than great. On this particular one that I have right here, I have not had that issue. The device has worked perfectly other than the fact that I scratched the screen like day one of getting it and it's never scratched or done anything since then. But other than that, that's really the only issues that I have. It has a fairly small forehead and almost no chin at all. It's a great symmetrical look. Got a great uh, face unlock. It's super fast, nice and reliable. And the speakers on it, because it does have the stereo pair, sounds amazing. So other than that, like those are a couple things that I really didn't like. And initially when the first time that this came out, the price tag was $899. So that was a fairly tough pill to swallow when buying the 4XL. But honestly, it's really not that bad in the land of when you go back and look exactly what some of these phones are doing two and three years ago, 900 bucks was right in line where we're going. Now I fully expect the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro to be a little bit more than that. Google's definitely made it clear that the A line is the affordable line and then the full time release is gonna be the ones that are actually more expensive, probably closer to a thousand bucks. But yeah, this kind of makes the Pixel 4 XL look like an incredibly great deal because again, right now you can go out and buy this particular thing for like less than 500 bucks easy you can on swap or you can buy it for less than 400, sometimes less than $300 and go out and get yourself that super awesome orange one. The oh so orange is oh so beautiful. So that's it, that's all I have. As always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below. See you next time.